So just to see what this looks like and to show you my version of it, I'm running on the emulator. I've got my project here. Notice it's got my new uh, last name there. I'm going to click. Loads up the uh, splash screen. Then we've got the, the home screen, text, graphics. There's the icon, my class list. So I'm going to click on that. Oh, we should probably get rid of this alert also. Um, but anyway, we click my class list. Pops this up just like before. Clear, add class, show class. Uh, so I was playing a little bit on how to fix this during the break. Uh, there's a couple of little things we can do to fix this up a little bit, but this will also depend on the size of the person's device. And this device that I'm running here is, is an old device. Uh, on the newer ones, it'll look a lot nicer because these, you know, these things are always changing orientation and, and resolution and such, but we'll, we'll fix it up a bit in a moment. Uh, and I can go in here and add a class number, class 222, uh, title, uh, apartment management, haha. -ha. Um, and um, add a name, add class, feedback, class added, show class. There's the, uh, there's the, uh, table which cuts off here because this is an older device, but we'll style it a little bit in CSS. We've got the delete and update. These should work the same as before. Um, let me just add here a gibberish class. So now I've got class 33333, which I can go in 33333, delete, goes away. I can click to edit. We'll update that button so that we have a nice looking button instead of edit. Let's say I wanted to edit um, class 222, click edit, pops up here again. Update class, updates it. So it's it should be functional either in the Cordova web browser like that or in the virtual device and I'm also running it on my real device and it looks pretty nice. It, it loads up on the device um, it visually looks a little better because it's better than this older um, emulated device and it still functions the same way. I can click that edit button and it lets me edit it. English, I'll add English 1 update and I updated it. So uh, we're going to style it a little bit more. It's functional. Now we need to massage it. We need to style it so it looks a little nice. We spent the last two weeks learning this database PouchDB and how to use it. We haven't worried too much about the visuals of it, uh, but now we'll, we'll worry about visually a little bit more. What I also want to do regarding CSS and styling is I want to add something about this on this table a little bit more readable. This is plain text. We're going to do something called zebra striping. You've probably seen this where you've got rows of data. So this table is perfect for displaying data. First class, second class, third class, etc. What I want to do is zebra striping where this row will be a certain background color, the next one will be another, the next one will be that same color, the next one will be the same color. You've seen this, alternating rows of colors. That's a lot easier to read than that. Right now with two classes, it's okay. But with 20 classes, it's just a big wall of text. People zone out. With zebra striping, it'll be a little more visually interesting to view. So we'll do that in a moment. And also, we want to add an icon to that um, to those edit buttons. So we'll do that right now. We'll go back to um, Notepad. In order for us to upgrade that plain old edit link, those edit links, that's in the HTML file switch to your HTML, your index file, and we're going to find the spot in our code that generates those edit those edit boxes. No, actually it's not in the HTML, is it? It's in the JavaScript. It's in the JavaScript, I remember. Those edit buttons are created via the JavaScript. So switch to your codica.js file Here we go, line 105 or so, uh, line 100. 
Line 100 is the part where we're displaying the rows of classes, and then at the very end, we've got that button, Edit. So line 100. In theory, what we could do here is simply add data-icon equals an icon. But we won't, because by testing it, we get this issue that these things don't exist until we click Show Classes. So for some reason, the jQuery mobile is not attached to this button at the right time. So simply doing, um, simply doing data role equals icon doesn't work. We have to do it a slightly different way. I looked it up at the jQuery mobile site, and here's another way to do it via a class, which, uh, which works, but it's a little messier. No problem. Here on line 100, inside of the class, we've got button edit inside of single quotes. So inside the single quotes, let's add a space. We're going to add some more classes. Data-icon. Well, data-role, button, and data-icon, those are all shorthands. Those same sorts of things can be written via classes. And sometimes we need to write the raw class, which is what we need to do here. So we're going to say UI-BTN, that's basically the same as data role equals button, space. And then we also need to add, just to make it, um, to give us our icon, UI-icon-edit. That's the same as uh, data-icon equals edit. This edit part right here would be the icon. So the edit icon, the list icon, the bullet icon, the bars icon, the user icon, whatever name of the icon, it's the last item there, ui-icon-whatever. Next, because we're doing it the, the raw way, uh, we then want to say uh, ui-btn-icon dash no text. That's similar to when we had previously um, data dash icon pause equals no text. That's when we took a button that had an icon and text and changed it so that we only have the icon. UI dash button dash icon dash no text. BTN actually. And because we're doing it this way, the long way, it does not automatically give you a round button. It gives you a little square button. So we have one more item here. This one's optional, but I want it round. UI-corner-all. Give me four round corners. Uh, we should be able to simply do run Firefox to see this result. It won't be functional, but I just want to see that we get those icons. Instead of it simply saying edit, we should get the jQuery mobile icon. All of this part right here, doing UI-whatever, is another way of doing data-icon, data-button, data-no-text, etc. Um, it seems to me what the the BTN edit, what, what does it do the memory? No, we haven't. Uh, but what, what we have done is um, data role equals edit. And edit is the, uh, is the icon, is the pencil icon. Yeah, we do have to run it in, in the browser. Okay, it is the it's the pencil icon. When we've previously done data icon edit, it creates a little edit pencil. So that's the same as what we just did right here. Data uh, UI dash icon edit.
um, sorry, not the, uh, the, the, the weird plus ones of the VTM edit. Okay, once again, all of this here is the way to do this via classes instead of data roll button, data icon yeah. edit, data. Uh, yeah, I get that part, but like, really first one. It is this very of, first yeah. one here? Oh, okay. Yeah. That very first one was when we were developing our pouch project in order for us to be able to click the edit button. Remember this. Um, this is back on the plain old pouch project. Show classes. Right here, that edit. Because when I search by the word, I can't see the like, edit, see it. We use it anymore. It was just like by itself. And I wonder if maybe we import it. Not sure the question. Uh, I think we're getting hung up on something. It works. The short answer is it works. It is we've we've done it somewhere here in the code that that's where we've got that edit text. So I'm going to run this in the browser. Cordova run browser. Okay, let's see my class list. Show classes. There we go. The edit pencil. So instead of it saying the word edit by adding those classes, now we have a button. And so when someone clicks on those, it populates these fields so they can edit. Class list, show classes. Oh, let's add one more little thing I forgot to add here. Uh, we added our code to give us these buttons. There's the buttons that look nice. But I forgot one thing. The buttons look a little big. There's, a, there's one little line that we can add to make them a little more small, a little bit more manageable like that. So you see here it is what we wrote. And we're going to do this where we, they're going to be slightly smaller. So actually, back on our code here, line 100, uh, we'll add one more item here. UI-mini. Make these buttons mini. Got the button. Got the button. Oh, I put it before, but it doesn't matter. We've got UI button. Uh, let me put it after. UI-button. UI-mini. We're making that button mini. So I'm not going to go ahead and, and run that uh, again, but what that does, if you want to run it, it looks like that. It just simply makes these icons a little smaller. Without UI Mini, they look like this. 
with many, they look a little more compact. Um, I was also um, experimenting with getting those icons to line up a little better and it looks like all we needed to do actually was change one little thing. If we go back to the index file, line 279, um, we've got uh, block ABC and those are inside of grid A. Looks like all we need to do is just change that to grid B. To, uh, 278 actually. It looks like grid B will give us what actually I was looking for which is the three buttons will be on one row and I'm not sure why B does that because I thought A was for the first row, B was for the second. Anyway, it looks like B will do it. That. That's what I'm looking for. So the, one of the buttons was moved down to the bottom, and it looks like all we need to do here is just change 278. UI grid A to UI grid B. Okay, so this table, um, on this table, I want to work on that. We have the space to use, you know, the width of the screen. We'll do that. We also want to style the table a little nicer. It looks very plain. So on our JavaScript file, just to remind you, on line 95 is where we create the table tag. And then down on uh, 103, we close table. So this is in the JavaScript file where we build a table row by row. But it's a plain old table tag. And we added a border so we can have, so we can see a border around the edges. And we added an ID. We added that so that then we can control it later via CSS or JavaScript. So this table that displays the classes is called class table. We're going to write some CSS then to style that table. 
we're going to open from your project folder. Now we're going to open the codica.css file. So the, the input forms are in index because they're HTML. The functionality of how those input forms work is JavaScript, so it's in the JavaScript file. And now visually, how does it look to the user? In the CSS file. So the three layers of our project. Go ahead and edit the .css file of Kodika. And what we'll do is we'll add a little bit of CSS so that we can style the look of it. Um, let's say at the very end of the document, we're going to write pound class table. It's an ID. So we start off with the pound symbol, class table, capital T, because that's how we wrote it when we, when we created the object in the JavaScript. Um, space, curly braces, close that. So first we're going to define a few general properties of this table. I'm going to say this table will have a width of 95%. Uh, it's going to take up 95% of the width of the, of the container, of the screen. It won't go completely end-to-end. -end. It'll have a little bit of extra margin. Because it doesn't go all the way to the edges, we can do this trick of adding margin, colon, auto, and that will center it on the screen. Once we define a width, we can change its margins, and having auto margin will put an equal amount on the left and the right of the screen, and top and bottom. To the whole table itself, I want to add a background color. Right now, it has no inherent color. It's taking the color of your, of your app, which in my case is like a plain kind of gray, but I'm going to add just a plain white background. That way it'll be very readable. It'll have black text on a white background. And if we were to further experiment with, with this, we will see that we've got, at a certain point, the, the, the table might flow off of the edge of the screen instead of breaking to a new line, you know, word wrap and such. So we've got a few things that we can do here to make sure that our table gets word wrap so that it doesn't just go off the edge of the screen. In the next line, we will say table dash layout colon fixed text dash wrap normal and then word dash wrap break dash word. These three things here seem to have us let us create a table that is responsive, that is flexible, that we add data to it and it will um, you know, break the word instead of going off the edge of the table, meaning off the edge of the page. That would look weird. This is another example where we would have to do run browser, Cordova run browser, Cordova emulate browser, whatever, to see this result. So I'm not going to do it yet. I'm going to further style the table a little bit more. After the class table definition, we will create another pound class table, and then space th. Wouldn't 
one more name. Oh, two. too many. Yes, there we go. C class. Class table space th. What that is saying is, um, we. This is a little more advanced. Where previously we've had only one selector. Now here we have two. Basically, from right to left. Wherever there's a th inside of a class table, do the following. Um, we can get really detailed, such as if we had, for example, uh, let's say also uh, an h1. If we had a heading 1 inside of a table heading, inside of a class table, that's what that would mean there. So spaces basically mean there's an element inside of an element inside of an element. That's how we can target very, very, very specifically this one word inside of this paragraph, inside of this div on that page. We add spaces to, to uh, separate them. So we're going to say any table headings in this table. We do have table headings. And what I want to do is, for the table heading, I also want to um, add some colors and such there. We'll, we'll, we'll pick the, you'll pick the perfect colors if you'd like, but just some examples here. Background dash color purple. This will just be an obvious color. Background color. And then we would, that would continue to have black text on a purple background, which would be hard to read. So we will add color, which is our text color, white. And a white text on purple background. That's readable. Again, you can choose your own color combos here. The point is that I'm targeting the THs of that table, only that table. If I have other tables throughout the project, they cannot have the same ID, of course, because IDs are unique. And those other tables will not have this color scheme. You may or may not want that. You may want all your tables throughout your whole project to have this color scheme. And all we would need to do is not say this unique ID. If we just wrote TH, every table in the whole project, every TH in the whole project would have purple and white. But you see, I only want this particular table to have only this particular table's THs to have these colors. Next, again we're going to target attributes of or elements of this particular table. So once again, pound class table. This time we'll do space TR. We can target the table rows. So if we left it like this, we would say every row is about to have the following which that won't make sense. I want one row to be one color, the next row to be another color, the next row to be another color, alternating rows. So we can do an, another more advanced CSS thing here. Um, here we will then have colon uh, nth dash of dash type, open close parentheses, is a pretty advanced thing where we can select in the parentheses odd. We're saying let's target the odd numbered rows of that table. And then curly braces. So there will be the first row, which is the th actually, purple. The next row, this color, and the following row, which will be even, uh, another color, and the following will be another odd one, and then this color. So in this case, let's say another background color. No, uh, this one we don't, we'll leave the inherent background color, which is white, but we will add um, well, no, we will uh, background color It's going to be like a, an off uh, gray. We're saying alternate rows will be a gray color. We didn't say anything about text color, so it will automatically be the regular font color of this of this of, of the project.
So I think uh, this is going to be some good styling for the table. Save all your files and then uh, emulate or run the project. CSS here then is to make the project look a little bit more visually interesting. I'm going to run it on my devices. So I've got it ready in my browser, my class list, show classes. Here we go. So again, might not be the perfect color combination, but we've got this table, which now spreads out. It was only taking up a little bit of space here. It goes 95% of the width, so we've got a little bit of margin. Um, table TH, there's our very first table heading. Purple background color, white text. Um, this very first one is 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 odd, the next one is even, the next one is odd. That's where we get that. No wait, uh, no, this one is odd. The th doesn't count. Odd, even, odd. Right? Yeah, odd ones are gray. Yeah, so this is gray right here. This is gray, the odd ones. So odd, even, odd, even, if we add it, and this will automatically apply. So if I add a brand new, um, brand new class, we have, a, we have now a brand new row, this is alphabetical, so here's the even, odd, even. I had another one that was odd. There we go, so it's automatically getting the colors. The zebra striping. And with this cool trick of selecting the nth of type, the odd ones, the odd rows, and then you can style it. Does that work for everyone? Anyone need a little help? I'm not sure why mine doesn't work at all when I move to uh, the, the only button working. It's like the clear one.
Um, I think they're different, you know, um, you told maybe I'm missing something. Um, so I have the pouch, yes, in my, my SDC, mm -hmm. and we also, we change the config file I did it. Mm -hmm. it uh, Let's do Cordova run browser. Whenever we can get the, the, the console. follow that red line that starts on line five. Let's just scroll down and see if it ends where it's supposed to end. So scroll 
down to follow that red line. Maybe it has to be eastern. Yeah, all of those higher blue lines. Yeah. Um, Splash screen and say we have the delay which you never touched. I put my E on the slave which is my narrative. I don't think it should matter because it's yeah. in quotes. Mm -hmm. Places where we would expect the errors, and we can't find it. This might be an example. 
Proceed and it's not going to quite work, but at least we'll see what else we need to do. And when we're able to uh, try it again, I would bring yeah. the stuff from the from the pouch into a brand new copy of mine, my essence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I just ask you one more question? Um, mm -hmm. I was, I mean, I asked you before, but um, have you ever used it? I mean, like uh, the. the yeah, we don't really use it. We don't really use it. Oh, like the JavaScript file. I, yeah, it's really good. Because I would press the And if you don't know as, I, as I thought about it, yeah, yeah, we added a class right there mm -hmm. in case we wanted to do something. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. like we had a this ID. ID in mm -hmm. case we wanted to do something. So yeah, we didn't do anything with it. So it's just uh, it's just there, just in case. It is, it's, so I'm saying that it's standing there, I'm not doing anything, and then, I mean, like this, it's like, oh, I'll go there, and it's like icon, yeah. 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 So, yeah. That one was our, our own, our own name, our own defined yeah. class, yeah. in case we wanted to do something, yeah. which we haven't done this before. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm.
Okay, so um, if we look back on the grand scheme of things, we've got this project that still is missing some things, like, for example, in the basic screen, we never filled that in over here on the PC screen. So there's, you know, placeholders that need to be filled in. Um, this stuff here does, has not been filled in. But we've got this catalog, which opens this external content, this calendar, um, the about, the map, and the customization, get directions. Remember all this that we did a while ago? So it has this functionality, and we just added my class list, which is for the person to, to save um, their classes, classes that they are going to take or have taken or whatever, taking notes, we could create, we, we could go in and add a field for notes to the person and adding that data as well as a notes field. And again, we could make this look a little nicer by having pop-ups happen, but feature-wise, we could um, get uh, close to publishing it in the interest of time because usually the class is four weeks long we've got three weeks we're not going to be able to to delve into some a little bit more um, visual editing and such I want to uh, go to the next phase which is all of this while we've been working with this testing version of the app this debug version of the app I want to now create the final published version of the app. So we're going to take a short break just to gather my stuff, and then when we come back, I'm going to turn the printer on also. We're going to look at sheet number nine now. So you might want to print that. Um, we'll just do a little bit less than 10 minutes. It's 8.32. Let's come back at 8.40. Uh, and when we come back, we're going to do sheet number nine, which is to publish our project. I'm going to put a copy of my work as it currently is into the network folder because it's done. And if you don't want to fall behind, I'm going to put a copy of my work in the network folder. You can work on that. So we'll be back in uh, seven minutes.